Good morning from Chengdu. All of you in Texas, we want to say a very warm hello to all of you. And this morning, which is your night, we have a very special guest that I'd love to introduce to you. And that is my dear friend, Dr. Sarah Bexell. Sarah is the Director of Education here at the Panda Research Center. And she's going to spend a few minutes with you now as we talk about where we are, why she is here, and what that means to you over in Texas. So Sarah, my first question is, uh, I know you came from Zoo Atlanta and you've had your doctorate in, in animal husbandry and, and uh, biology and this, and now here you are 10,000 miles away in China. What what caused got you to move over here? What was the magic that got you there? <laughs> well, the magic is probably giant pandas, um, but not just because they're so cute um, and such wonderful animals, but also for what they symbolize. Um, I think to um, just about anybody on our planet, they are sort of the iconic. Um, wildlife species that everybody sort of immediately when they see a, a picture or a, a, even a cartoon of a, a panda immediately starts thinking about endangered species and conservation and sort of the, the global biodiversity crisis that we're facing and so but at the same time not in a sort of doom and gloom kind of way they're just like oh this animal is so beautiful and you know scientists are you know fighting very hard to save this animal and then we hope they will also start thinking about their own behavior and how that relates to conservation. Sure. Are, are pandas endangered as a species? How many are there in the world that you know of? They are one of the most critically endangered mammals on our planet. Uh, the last survey that was completed in 2004 found that there were approximately uh, 1,600 left in the wild. In the wild. In the wild. Uh -huh. In captivity, we have right around 260. Mm -hmm. um, but we are in birthing season right now. We had four born here, even at our base, this past weekend. And so the captive population keeps growing each year. That's um, and that's very exciting. But we are very, very nervous about the wild population. I, I can imagine, especially with the earthquakes that occurred this past May, there went all of your food sliding down the mountain. The mountain gave away and the bamboo with it. And so that means really a lot more expenses to you to get the bamboo for these young people who are going to right behind us. And, and look at them. They, they are just the most wonderful animals that you will ever see. Well, okay, so they are endangered, so their food supply is endangered. What could people in America do to help? How can we help you here at this research center? Um, there's a lot of things that, that people um, in other countries can do, as well as, of course, the domestic population here. And first and foremost is just um, thinking about your own consumptive behaviors, um, the, the purchases that you make, whether you really need to have all the, especially Westerners tend to like to have a lot of stuff around them. Yeah. Um, that really doesn't add to their happiness. It might a little bit, but for the most part, you know, just sort of collecting of odds and ends and goods and multiples of everything. Um, every time we buy something, that takes a hit to the natural environment. Um, and something even more direct is right now, bamboo is becoming such a popular item in furniture, in, in decorative goods, um, bamboo chopsticks, things like that. And so if, if people can limit their consumption of bamboo, um, that is something that I think that you can make, have a more direct feeling about. And then of course there's always you know donating to um, good organizations when you know your money's actually going to wildlife conservation. Yeah. Um, and then something that's fun to do, we actually just consulted on a children's book um, called Watch Me Grow Panda. And the, we're really, really blessed because Penguin Books, um, who sort of gov governs DK Books, who published the book, has decided to donate all the proceeds from both the Chinese and the English version to our base to help us feed our, our pandas here, but also then start working in the giant panda reserves to help them rebuild their infrastructure now after the winter. And the name of that book again? Watch Me Grow Panda. And you can get that book on Amazon.com. Before I left, in fact, I bought five books. Five. 
I have five grandchildren, and you can guess where those books have gone. And my son in California uh, has two twin boys that are three, and they are devouring this book. My son said, I'm so happy you sent two books, because that way they don't tear them apart and fight over the book. So it's a bestseller in my home, for sure. So, well, what we're going to do now is we're going to move uh, over to uh, your other area, maybe your research area, and finish the interview there. But uh, in the meantime, uh, hang on, because we still have a few more minutes to be with you when we uh, meet again. So, and for the moment, right behind me, we're going to say goodbye to our little friends, and they are just having the best breakfast ever. Just look at them. They uh, are two-year-olds, so they were all born in 2006. Oh. <laughs> Two years old and still eating at a rapid rate. Okay, we'll see you then in a moment. Bye for now. Tony's got the, uh, the lens right is the red panda. Smaller considerably than the giant panda. Uh, whew, I'm a bit out of breath. The old man's tiring, but uh, not Sarah. She's filled with vim and vigor. And she's going to tell you a little bit about this red panda. So, Sarah? Um, well, red pandas, um, it's actually the, the fact that they're called pandas is quite confusing to most people. Uh, giant pandas and red pandas are not very closely related. Of course, they are both mammals, um, both indigenous to China. The red panda, however, um, still ranges into a few other countries uh, in Asia. But where they occur in China, overlaps directly with giant pandas. Uh, giant pandas, as you may know, are part of the bear family or the Ursidae family, um, whereas red pandas are in the Prasinidae family. And as you could see probably when you were looking at the red pandas, um, that striped tail might give you a little bit of an indicator as to who they might be closely related to, and that is um, raccoons, which of course we in North America are extremely familiar with. We did not actually know that giant pandas were for sure ursids, or the bear family, and that red pandas were in the Prasinidae family until we were able to look at DNA evidence. Um, and the tests were just done back in 1998, so it's very recent that we were able to definitively say what um, mammalian um, families these animals belong in. Because not only do they occur in the same geographical range and habitat type, they have a lot of other behavioral um, qualities and physiological qualities that are similar to giant pandas. Uh, they breed at similar time of the year. Um, they eat the same kind of food. Both are, eat 99% of their diet is bamboo. Um, and this, the fact that their habitat is so incredibly similar, taxonomists were very confused as to where exactly to place these guys. But now we definitely know they're not very closely related. But in English, we still call them um, both pandas, and actually the Chinese for them is quite similar too. Uh, da Shung Mao is large, uh, large bear cat is actually the direct translation, and these guys are Xiao Shung Mao, which is little bear cat. Little bear. So both in Chinese and in English, their names are a little bit confusing. Makes them sound like they're really close relatives, but they're not. So. Okay, <laughs> and so we say farewell, for the moment anyway, to Ursa Minor. <laughs> Actually, that's the name of a star, uh, but certainly Ursa being bear and minor being small or shao, as in Chinese. So we'll see you in a moment. Well, Sarah, here we are finally at one of many laboratories within the research center, this being the fertility lab. And I don't want to stay here too long, I might catch it. But uh, yeah, right. In any event, uh, uh, I wanted to show some of this background because this is where the money goes. In addition to uh, helping to feed the pandas, uh, both the red and the giant pandas, uh, it, money is needed badly to support research to ensure the survival of the species. And that's what happens here. The scientists are working day in and day out trying to ensure that sustainability of the ecosystem 
and of the panda will be with us forever. Sarah, thank you so much. You've been wonderful. Bless your heart. My pleasure. Absolutely. So glad you could make it all the way out here to the other side of the world. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And class, we'll see you tomorrow morning. And guess what? Sarah is going to be online with you to answer your questions. So take a look at the video. I hope you do, because tomorrow we're going to have a little quiz and see what you remember. Until then, Sai Chen from Panda <laughs> Research Center. Bye-bye. <laughs>